So I've been thinking a lot about this lately. I've been thinking about alternatives to tires in the Earthship. Now, two years ago, I flew out to Taos and I toured a bunch of Earthships. None of them really had any type of off-gassing from the tires. None of them really had, um, some of them were even exposed. Like some of the older Earthships that I stayed in, I stayed in several models. But still, something in me just doesn't want to be out there <laughs> for seven months pounding tires. Also, the remote location where I want to try to build the Earthship office as like a, t a test structure, it's, I can get local tires from the dump. Um, they do have like 30 at a time, but it's going to take a really, really long time to both accumulate and install those. And I think I would rather explore some alternatives. Um, for one thing, it's not that I question the structural uh, stability of the tires. I think they're great. I think the steel radio belt tires, I mean, you can't really get anything stronger than that. However, I really don't like the idea that the, the wall is full of rubber. Um, even though I've experienced it for myself and there hasn't been any ill effects, I mean, I stayed in them for several, you know, several different types for several different nights, no issues at all. I just, something, something in me just doesn't want to do it, right? So, <clears throat> I'm trying to come up with a better alternatives to the tire wall that's faster to build, easier, and maybe even stronger. So obviously if money was no object, I would just do the poured foundation route because I mean, it's going to be hired out. I'm not going to go buy concrete forms. I'm probably not going to spend you know, two months trying to build some slip, fo uh, slip form wall. There's tons of stones and rock and other things that I could use on site, but it's just not something that I want to do. It's, it's worth it just to pay the money and do that. However, there may be some other options that I am not looking at or that would work better. Um, I saw some of like the green, there's a website or, or a guy, I think it's like Green Healthy Homes or Healthy Eco Homes or something like that. I can't remember the name, but he suggests maybe replacing this with a dry stack block wall. And I like that idea because I can lay dry stack block or I can lay regular block, even though I wouldn't want to sit there and do mortar for a week. <laughs> uh, dry stack should be okay. The only thing that I was concerned about with the dry stack is if you're putting this on any kind of uh, slope, right, you're going to have to excavate um, if you were planning on burying any of this stuff. If you're going to do the dry stack and you're really going to want to coat it good, you need extra room to kind of work back there. I know you'd have to excavate anyway if you wanted to do the tire wall and then also insulate and roof cover the earth behind it to keep it dry so that it actually doesn't leach heat from the building. But at the same time, you know, I don't know. These are all just things that I'm exploring. There's probably people out there that are better equipped to make some suggestions. That's why I'm making the video. So maybe you guys can do a sort of discussion in the comments and we can talk about some of the options. So the first option that was recommended to me was ICF. There are several different types of ICF block units that were recommended to me. One was like Fox block or fast block or something like that. It's basically the ones that have, <clears throat> it's a regular block, but then on one side, it has the thermal mass, and I believe that's to the inside. And so I don't really think that's necessary with an Earthship style design. However, I like the concept, but I didn't really like the price. The other was, um, I can't think of all the different ICF manufacturer names, but they're all kind of similar, right? Um, you could do an ICF wall back here, but still, I think you're gonna have to obviously hire somebody to help with the pour, and most likely you need a pump truck or a pump crew if you couldn't get a concrete truck all the way back in there. Plus, if you're not doing ICF all the time, if you have a blowout or something like that, well, knowing how to deal with that, that makes me a little bit nervous. Um, if we had a blowout on poor day, I think I could handle it and get it fixed and not ruin the entire wall, but at the same time, that is an extra level of stress. Um, I'm not sure, <laughs> unless you do it every day, I'm not sure um, how often it happens or how hard it is to deal with, but I've seen some nasty videos where there's just concrete leaking out of the wall and people don't know what to do and <laughs> everyone's kind of freaking out. Uh, next on the list would be the CMUs. Um, it's just a concrete masonry unit, basically just standard block. No additional mass added to the block. These are pretty cheap. Um, I think they're about $1.20 a piece, maybe $1.50 delivered. One of the things that's attractive about this is that I could probably do a self-install and it's not gonna absolutely kill me like the pounding of the tires would. And if this structure is say only 26 feet wide or, or 26 feet long, really don't need that large of a wall, especially if I shrink the rear roof height down a little bit to say seven and a half feet, eight feet, because the usable space is really gonna be out here for an office. 
And so I was really thinking about either dry stack block or traditional block and just paying somebody to lay it or laying it myself. I just don't know. I mean, what I like about this is that I could either pour the rebar columns solid and you could get your strength there, but I could also just fill the rest of them with sand and that would sort of give me that insulated wall that I was looking for. On the other hand, I feel like I'm cheaping out a little bit by not having either a port foundation or a really thick or really high mass wall like the tires give you because it's like 20 inches thick basically by the time you're done. However, I think you can make up a lot of that with the um, extending, well, I don't want to call it an earth umbrella, we haven't gotten to that yet, but extending the insulated layer that's behind the tires to sort of create um, you know, that additional section of insulation. However, one of the things that I wasn't sure about is if, if you were to extend this out, obviously you don't want your roof you know, to have to be super long to keep that dry. So I wonder if anybody wraps that with um, the pond liner or EDP or whatever all that stuff is, the vinyl stuff that they get from the used sign companies or blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that was an idea. Um, timber, I, I see in the Wafatis and some of the, in this book here, um, this seems like a great idea and there's tons of timber and stuff on the property. I just, I'm hesitant for two reasons. The first reason that I don't like a permanent wood foundation is I just question how long the logs are gonna last if you sink them into the earth. Whether you burn them, whether you, I guess you could wrap them in pond liner or something and basically just make like a socket. But is there settling when you do that? I mean, do you have to use a plate compactor? Do you have to put stones in there? Should there be a rubble trench? Do you need foundation where the stones go? I like the idea because of the accessibility to the materials and I think it's faster to build it. However, I'm hesitant about putting, you know, direct contact or direct contact timbers in as a structural member. And then two, I hate the idea of having columns every six feet. I mean, it just, it totally ruins the layout of, you know, the idea is to have this as an open space, just like a global model Earthship. So I don't want to, you know, whether I end up building an Earthship or not, that's kind of like number one requirement. You, you, we've got to have a use of, good usability of the space. Otherwise, it's not worth building it, right? And so, I don't know. I, I don't think that's really an option. I did look at a couple of things where you can sort of use the timbers and then have that be a non-removable front form board and basically just dig a trench behind them. Go find stones from the property. <clears throat> Actually, I should lay that out. So back here, basically use, um, vertical um, pieces or vertical logs, sorry, and use those as your back wall structure and then dig a trench behind it. This is your plastic layer and then throw stones and rebar and all kinds of other stuff in the trench right here basically and then hand mix concrete and pour it in the hole and essentially it, these never get removed so you just have like a decorative Actually, it would be more than decorative. It's kind of gonna be structural and load bearing. This is all the, the load bearing that you would need. So I didn't really understand the, the point. I think somebody was just trying to say, hey, if you really don't trust that the logs aren't gonna sink, you could pour a footer behind them or do a rubble trench, get your concrete, have your logs, leave them in place, not remove anything, and you'd have tons of load bearing capacity. To me, that kind of seems like you're building two walls. <laughs> I mean, I get it, um, but at the same time, we're trying to find alternatives to the tires so that it's easier to install and less money. And so by less money, people think that it's cheap because you can do all the tire pounding and stuff that you, you know yourself, but time is money, especially for me. So it's cheaper for me to pay to have something expedited most of the time than it is for me to spend months and months or hiring a crew of a few guys to spend weeks or months pounding tires. So. Every single other option that I've looked at is really cheaper um, in terms of time than the tires. And I don't have to worry about the tires themselves. There's still a small part of me that's like, yeah, I don't want a tire filled wall, man. I don't know why, I just haven't gotten over it. Um, I should have, but. And that leads me to the third one, which is the earth umbrella. And that's something that I learned about in this book and from, I think it's Home in the Earth or something like that. Simon's build, I don't know the guy, but his videos and stuff have been extremely helpful. So then it's kind of like, well, if we're gonna get rid of a lot of the systems from the earth ship, and we're gonna do an earth sheltered umbrella, and we're gonna extend this stuff way, way out, you know, past all this, 
what type of engineering do you need <laughs> to support, you know, 24 inches of earth on top of this? And how does that change the structure of the back wall? Would you still use tires? There's no doubt in my mind that tire bricks can withstand the downward pressure of that. But obviously the, the beams or whatever you would use to implement that, I would also probably think that the tire wall itself or whatever you put back there would need some beefing up on the footer end. And then whatever columns you've got out front with your uh, load bearing wall that's gonna carry that load in the front. But the biggest thing is, what do you, I don't think you can just put Vigas on a four to six foot center or whatever, whatever they're usually spaced at. I don't know if that would carry the load of, of that much earth. And then I don't know how that changes, um, you know, things with the tires. I would definitely, if I just built a small little eight inch block wall and the whole thing wasn't poured solid, and then you switched midstream to do an earth sheltered roof or an earth sheltered umbrella and you're carrying a lot more weight, I'm not so sure that I would trust that setup. I would think you would want <laughs> maybe a little bit thicker block, definitely heavier duty footer. Um, I would feel more comfortable with a poured foundation wall, maybe an eight to a 10 inch wall, um, maybe even some of the ICF products look pretty good and super solid, but really, if you look at the actual um, concrete thickness, a lot of the ICF stuff is pretty thin, like four to six inches. So if you look at your, if you were to strip off the foam and you were just to look at your concrete webbing that's left, um, I'm not saying that it's not strong, I'm not saying that it's not faster and more insulated and all that stuff, but it just seems like um, if, if you're going for strength or supporting a lot of weight, maybe that isn't, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm kind of, this is a little bit outside of my wheelhouse, that's why I thought I would do a video and go over some of the options to tires, see what you guys think. There's other people out there. I saw another video where somebody used, um, basically they did an earth berm house. So it wasn't completely buried all the way around. It was essentially um, a flat shed style roof and they had their container. This was the porch. And then they had a berm that went up like this and around the back. And they had a couple windows here, kind of like a basement, you know, and something you would see in Maine where I'm gonna build this thing. Um, and it was sort of earth sheltered. They used ICF for this, but they didn't have, they, they had a really thick spray foam roof. So there wasn't a ton of weight, you know, on the roof. When you're talking about doing an earth umbrella or an earth sheltered roof to try to beef up the cold climate um, performance of an earth ship and use an alternative to the tires, sort of throws things off a little bit. So I don't know. I just thought I would do a video, go over some of the alternatives to tires that I have found, see what you guys think, and maybe we can create some helpful dialogue in the comments.